Hi everyone, happy February. I am Alyssa and today I want to share with you all the books that I read in January. Um, I only have five books to share with you so let's just jump right into it. The first book that I read this year is The Ice Palace by Tarje Vesas. Uh, Tarje Vesas is a Norwegian author and this is a Norwegian classic translated from Norwegian of course. It's a very short read and um, this has become sort of a seasonal read for me or I think it's it's becoming that, I suppose. Perfect for a winter afternoon. It's only about 130 pages or so. And the story follows two 13-year-old girls, Sis and Un. And Un, uh, they are just becoming good friends as Un gets lost one day um, in the ice formation of a frozen waterfall called the Ice Palace. And this book is very much about Sis and her adolescent experience with grief. Um, this is not meant for teenagers, that's not the like reading demographic, but it's a very sophisticated and subtle and psychological uh, exploration of that experience. The center of this book especially becomes extremely uh, poetic. Uh, it's really really beautiful and very cold in the writing style. The uh, the atmosphere and the uh, environment of this cold, nor dark Norwegian winter really comes through in the writing as well. And I am, I'm not sure that I am exactly familiar with what, like, technically experienced with what nature writing is, but this is what nature writing makes me think of. So I believe that if you are a fan of nature writing or poetry, you would probably really enjoy at least big parts of this book. Um, it's really, really beautifully written. And like I said, it's great for a winter afternoon. I really recommend this one. I think I gave it five stars. I then read The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, and I already have a full review of this book on my channel. I'll link it here in this video as well. This is a story, um, a multi-generational story. It takes place um, across three different narrative timelines in the present day and in 1940s and in, um, in the 1700s. And this book is about how all of these women suffer physical and psychological violence from men in various ways, taking various forms appropriate to their time period, more or less, um, for the, because they fail to or resist conforming to patriarchal standards in whatever way, um, right? And so I'm not going to get a whole lot more into it than that, but what I did really appreciate about this book was, one, the author's use of form. I think that she uses um, form through the way that she structures her novel and like using narrative voice um, in a way that really enhances and reinforces her theme of, um, of violence and the way that women are allowed or not allowed to use their voice throughout history. Um, I think that's really well done and I also really enjoyed the very gothic atmosphere of this book. There are gothic tones throughout it, certainly. Um, it takes place in Scotland and the book is extremely atmospheric. It feels very, very cold. Um, and there are some s subtle, uh, supernatural gothic elements in this book as well. And I think that the author used that, brought in some of that gothic inspiration in a way that was really uh, well done and complimentary to the overall book. So I thought this book was quite good, very accomplished, and I gave it three stars. So check out my full review if you want more thoughts on it. The next book I have to share with you is American Born Chinese by Jean Yang. This is a story of a second generation immigrant adolescent experience. Um, it has three different narrative strains that all intertwine into the theme of how being a second generation immigrant or just an immigrant um, has, it, it captures the emotional experience of feeling othered while also reframing the narrative in a way that ex internally explores identity. This book, this book has three different narrative strains. One is very much a fantasy narrative about a monkey superhero god, um, and the other is of a boy whose Chinese cousin comes to visit, and, and he behaves in a very embarrassing way for him, and then the third is of a Chinese immigrant who is 
uh, very hard on himself and there are lots of things he doesn't like about himself. And the author uses these three different narratives to intertwine the complexity and especially the duality of identity that immigrant and second generation um, children of immigrants experience as they balance their identities between multiple cultures and multiple countries and um, things like that. This is certainly intended for a younger, um, like middle grade audience, I would say. Um, and I think that the author handles the subject matter in a way that is very appropriate to that age demographic, um, but also has a lot of levels of um, complexity, a lot of different um, ways of viewing the subject matter, perspectives um, that, through which he approaches it, and I think um, he does it really quite well. Personally, I haven't found uh, graphic novels to be a my style of literature a whole lot, so I think that the author uses it in a good way, but I think I'm also very much not the target demographic. I give this one three stars, and I think if it sounds appealing to you, it's um, very well done. The next book that I finished in January is one that I uh, was also another reread and one that I've talked a bit about recently, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I just finished the sequel to this and that was in my uh, 2020 favorites video so you can go and check out that if you want to hear more about that but I'll also be reviewing it again here really soon. Um, this is, uh, just to jump the gun a little bit, this is part of um, the series and I am writing my master's thesis on this. So I'm only going to briefly mention this here um, because I read it pretty, uh, <laughs> it was a pretty close reading and I did a lot of annotations and things like that reading it this time. Um, but um, I'm going to do a more complex review on this in the future. So here I'm just going to kind of mention that again I was rereading this and this is a uh, first contact story about um, uh, sort of a a Transformer-esque statue that shows up and a girl April who first sees it and she makes a video and this uh, blows up because it's this statue is not terrestrial, right? Um, and so she becomes sort of the face of a movement and what I stood out to me this time reading it was the um, the author's conversations surrounding identity, especially in terms of branding and online identity, um, attaching your identity to a an idea or an ideology, and uh, the way that that uh, is in fact both extremely dehumanizing, but also is our sort of modern method of monetizing ourselves, of uh, gaining an audience by marketing our own identity, and that through leveraging our identity and through attention commodification, this is, I mean, I'm describing a pundit basically, but like it's, it's a form of influence that is enabled through the internet and through online spaces. So that sort of conversation of identity it, um, compounded with um, or looked at through the lens of internet culture. Um, that was really what kind of stood out to me this time around and something I found very, very interesting. And then you take all of that and add um, the sort of the complexity of radicalization that happens when, uh, when critical thinking is inhibited because there's too much emotional attachment and identity attachment to ideologies. So it's, um, I think it's a very interesting book, obviously. And again, I, like I said, there'll be more thoughts coming in the future. Um, if you have any specific thoughts on this book, you please drop them in the comments down below because I would um, love to hear them. And uh, stay tuned for another review on that one at some point in the future. It might actually be a little bit. We'll see because I kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should just review the the duology and then, you know, in several months time do a, like a rehashing of the series in a way that is uh, encompassing the thoughts of my thesis because that, you know, that's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, you can share your preference down below if you are eager for a review. If not, I mean, it's 
it's arguably considered a YA novel, which is like really not what I normally talk about here. So maybe no one who watches my videos really cares about that. So that's fine. Anyway, the um the next and last book that I have to share with you from this month is The Magpie Murders from Anthony Horowitz. Um, this was a this is a mystery novel, and I've really been trying to get back into mystery lately because this was my favorite genre when I was a kid and a teenager, and um, I've sort of realized that I like I miss that mystery element. I think reading mysteries is really so fun. Um, so I heard about this one, and I thought it would be really fun. The premise of the book is that there is a um, an editor who is uh, she she works she is an editor for a mystery writer an author an author who writes mystery novels that would be a more clear way of saying it um and she gets one of his a, a final script um in which he's sort of finishing off this character um his character's series um and but this script is incomplete and as she discovers that it is incomplete there uh the author has also been killed. And she starts to notice some parallels between the author's, uh, his death and this, the manuscript that she just received from him in ways that, um, there are just sort of like too many things that she finds suspicious and she begins her own investigation. So I thought the premise sounded, sounded really interesting because it's like a book inside of a book. Like basically a, the first half of the book is like one manuscript and you kind of shift into the book that that manuscript exists inside of. I think this book is really meant to be an ode to the classic whodunit. There are parts that because there's this mystery novel inside of this novel, um, the editor character is very aware of like mystery solving techniques inside of mystery literature and so she is sort of transparent about that it makes it just a little bit meta um and i think that that's a really interesting element however i personally just didn't quite jive with this book by having a novel inside of a novel it just made it so long and we read this entire story um, you know, like a hundred pages of a story, which then just kind of becomes a clue and it felt like so much effort to put into it. And I mean, you are kind of getting a two for one deal with these two mystery stories in, um, together, but the way that it was sort of drug out meant that I, you know, by the end of the whole book, I wasn't as interested in like knowing the end of the first mystery manuscript, if that makes sense. Um, so this one was kind of a miss for me. It was clever, but I didn't end up actually being impressed with a lot of it. So maybe I'm just extremely, extremely picky. I definitely want to keep on reading some mystery novels and see if this is like something I still enjoy and not just something from my childhood. But anyway, I am, um, I only gave this one a two star. And if it sounds interesting to you, then it probably should be worth it because I've heard really good reviews of it. So it might've just been a miss for my personal taste. Sad to end on a low note, but I am really happy with my month of reading. And um, especially here in February, I've already gone off to a good start with a few books that I've really, really enjoyed. So I look forward to sharing those with you. Um, Please feel free to share what you're reading with me down below. I always love to hear from you guys and um, when you say hi down there. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye!